Still City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans. It is a full house in Spread Studios today. I got JK47, Big Easy, and J Dash with me. Mostly, they're going to do all the work because we're about to start our baseball coverage for the year. Dash, we're talking about the Toronto Blue Jays, am I correct? Yep, that's what we're going to start off with the AL East, and we're going to start with the division winners, the Toronto Blue Jays. Who we predicted to win after the trade deadline. Yeah, I predicted them to go to the World Series, actually, but it didn't work out that way. Why You're not? Wrong. Why not? Well, I mean, you never know in the playoffs, man. If you run into pitching, you lose. That's I about guess, it. I guess. Unless it's the Pirates pitching. Well, Kansas City obviously scored runs, so, I mean... Yeah. Maybe pitching's the factor. Well, they did bring in David Price for the playoff run. Now, they, they didn't get to keep him. They lost him in free agency. Who is also winless in seven postseason starts. There you go. Maybe it's his fault, then. Dude's garbage. So, Boston, you're beat. <laughs> is that where he went? Yeah. Uh. But let's look at what Toronto did here this offseason so far. They re-signed second baseman Darwin Barney and second baseman Meiser Asturis. Now, those aren't big signings, but their their best second baseman, Devon Travis, the rookie from last season, a guy I hyped up before the season, he came through. He hit over 300, had eight home runs and 200 and some at-bats, I think it was. He actually went down and missed the end of the season, and he's not going to be back until May. So they're going to try to go a combo of... Goins, Barney, and Meiser restores his second base until Devon Travis comes back. But once he comes back, man, this team's looking good. Now, they made a couple signings. They signed J.A. Happ to a three-year deal, gave him some pretty good money. What was it, like three years, $36 million, something like that? Uh, they signed pitcher Gavin Floyd. He He's probably going to pitch out of the bullpen, I would think, and relief pitcher David A. Ardsma, a pretty good relief pitcher. They also claimed Junior Lake and made a couple trades. They traded for Jesse Chavez with Oakland. This guy pitched pretty well out of the back end of Oakland's rotation the past couple seasons. They gave up Liam Hendricks for him, so they didn't give up too much for him. They got a pretty good pitcher for the back end of the rotation, so I kind of like that move. And then they traded for relief pitcher Drew Storen. He's probably going to close for them because they got a pretty young bullpen out there, at least at the back end with Robert Asuna, who closed for him for part of last season at least, but they gave up Ben Revere to the Nationals, and he's a pretty good player, and I think he'd fit in very well and start on his team if they would would have kept him, but they figured they needed the bullpen help, so getting rid of Ben Revere, a guy they brought in at the trade deadline last season, so he wasn't a huge part of their team all season long. I mean, really, they lost David Price. He came in at the trade deadline. Latroy Hawkins, he came in at the trade deadline. He retired, actually. The owner, Navarro, they lost him the free agency. Cliff Pennington came in at the trade deadline, lost him the free agency. So really, from what they had at the beginning of the season, they didn't really lose much. In fact, they gained because Marcus Stroman, you remember, was out for most of the season. And people thought he was going to miss the full season. He did have a couple outings at the end of the season there. But they lost David Price, but really they kind of got Marcus Stroman in return for him just because Stroman was out so long and they really didn't have two aces at any one time. Well, I think the big loss for this team is actually going to be Ben Revere. I personally would have went with Osuna. He looked great last year to finish the season. So trading for Drew, and I'm not a big Drew Storen fan. No, I'm not either. But now you got Storen in Osuna, plus you got Brett Cecil. So your seven, eight, nine does look pretty good at the in the bullpen. And really, I mean. Yeah, I know you don't like their pitching staff, but that's only half of it. you got to have a good bullpen, too. But you're right, I do like Ben Revere. And really, they have Michael Saunders out there right now. And that's a guy that has trouble staying healthy, a guy that K's a lot, has a little bit of power, a little bit of speed. But Ben Revere has been a guy that's proven to hit over 300 most seasons. So I would have stuck with Ben Revere. Uh, he's on base. He will score a ton of runs for you, especially when you got Batista, Donaldson, and then Conacion following him up, not to mention Tula's out there too. Yeah, the one problem with his, him is he does hit over 300, but he doesn't have a huge on-base percentage because he doesn't take many walks. So that's his one downside, plus he doesn't have a good arm on, in the field either, although he can cover some ground because he has huge speed. He can steal you 50 bases in, in a season. Well, he's a good defensive outfielder. So you see, yeah. He just can't throw it. Right, right. So it, here's what they have. They have Michael Saunders, Kevin Pillar, and Jose Bautista in the outfield. Obviously, Bautista, what do you have, 41 homers last season. This guy's always a beast. Now, they may be getting rid of him after this season. We'll have to see if they bring him back or not. 
But Kevin Pillar, he had a pretty decent season. He's not a beast or anything. But if he can repeat what he did last season, it was a pretty good season. So if he could just repeat that, that isn't a terrible center fielder. He's not going to give you huge stats or anything. But the one question to me in the outfield is Michael Saunders. Is he going to be able to stay healthy? And is he going to put up a decent batting average for you? I mean, this guy always did have the power and the speed. But like I said, he K's so much. His average stays down. He's a pretty good fielder, though, as well. So their outfield isn't beast or anything. But then you go into the infield and you look around me. And when they get the Vaughn Travis back at second base, they're going to have Josh Donaldson at third, MVP, Troy Tulowitzki at shortstop. Like I said, Travis is second base, and then they have a pretty good mix of first basemen too. Chris Colabello, who was originally played in Minnesota, he, he was always a decent bat, but he never really put it together. Then last season, he hit well over 300. I don't know if you can re expect him to repeat a 300 batting average every season, but he also had 15 home runs and a little over 300 at bats, so he gave you some power. Then they have Justin Smoke, a guy that Strikes out a lot, has a low batting average, but he does have some serious power. So the combination between those two are pretty pretty nice. And then you got Encarnacion if you ever want to play him at first as well. But he's going to be mostly dh in for him. Are the Blue Jays going to score over four runs a game? I mean, this offense looks pretty good to me, man. I mean, the only question really, it, it, the only place they could put more offensive powers in the outfield to me because you got Russell Morton, a catcher too. This guy... Playing for the Pirates, he had a high batting average, didn't hit too many home runs. Now, obviously, you go from playing in Pittsburgh to go to Toronto in the best division for a batter. His power goes up, his average goes down, but he's uh, great on the field. He hit over 20 home runs last season. You could see 20 home runs out of Russell Martin again. He's probably not going to hit 290, more around 250, 260, but that's great out of a catcher. So this offense looks great to me, but like 47 said, it, the question, the biggest question should be the rotation, right? I'd say the whole pitching staff in general is a little bit suspect. You don't like Storin, Osuna, and Cecil with the back end of the bullpen? I like Osuna. See, my thing is with Storin is he's been incon. Well, I mean, well, he's been solid, but inconsistent. I mean, if anything happens where he blows some saves, they could always take him out, put him in the seventh inning, and you still have two guys that have been closers before. So I, I kind of like it. They have three guys there that can close for you. The guy I like in that pen is going to be Aaron Sanchez. Yeah. If he's not in the rotation. But, I mean, I think he actually plays out better as a bullpen guy. I like his stuff in And he could be a closer, work. too. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's the guy I'm going to like in the bullpen. I, I like him better than Storer, to be honest with you. Well, what about the rotation? You obviously like Marcus Strom. And, like I said, he didn't play much of last year. But this guy is a beast. But he is small. He's sort of like a... Johnny Johnny Cueto size, maybe he's not as thick as Johnny Cueto, but those smaller guys kind of scare me some because the ones that have those power arms, sometimes they can't stay healthy. Sort of like Johnny Cueto for the first, what, four or five years of his career? Well, look at Tim, Tim Linscombe's your classic example. Of yeah, Tim Linscombe's a... another one. He fell apart real quick. I mean, he's still solid, but... Who, Linscombe? Oh, yeah. Nah. Solid is and he'll eat the... <laughs> <laughs> Did that wrong. I mean, it's it, not it, a fifth pitcher or a bullpen arm, I'll take him. Don't get me wrong, but he's he's definitely not what he used to be, man. Only well, threw his no hitters whenever he wasn't on the. Yeah, use. I mean, don't get me wrong. So, he, what he did have a no hitter last he, year from. He's still for, he's had two of them in the past what three or four years, I think. Yeah, but he's just he doesn't have the power arm like he used to. Oh, man. definitely not. But outside of Marcus Stroman, you got Marco Estrada, R. A. Dickey. J.A. Happ, who we mentioned they brought in, he played for Seattle at the beginning of the year last year, was terrible. The Pittsburgh Pirates traded for him, saw something in him. He came out and pitched very well for, what, seven, eight, nine starts, something like that. And that's really what got him his deal. Now, if he pitches like he did for the Pirates, Toronto got a steal. If he pitches like he did for Seattle, Toronto just got screwed on that deal. I personally thought it was a risk. Oh, it's definitely a risk. That's why Pittsburgh really never even thought about bringing him back. Three years, over $30 million. That's very scary for just seeing seven, I think it was seven or eight good starts. Well, they didn't think that Mark Burley could cut it for the rotation this year. Mark Burley is nowhere near the top eight of this rotation, man. They're thinking Aaron Sanchez has a shot, at least according to the official Toronto website, but it also says that that 
uh, MLB.com made this projected lineup, and it is not subject to approval by Toronto. So Toronto screen. didn't put the official roster together here, but this is the official. I mean, that's how it is. MLB has the official web pages of all these teams now for some reason. It's weird. But behind that, like I said, they brought in Jesse Chavez. I think that's a good arm for the back end of the rotation. Then you got Drew Hutchison, a guy, still a young pitcher, has a power arm, has some control problems. This guy still can be a good pitcher. He's a big pitcher, and he throws hard. And I think he can still be a good pitcher, but still nothing more than a number three, I'd say. So really, you got your ace. You got some power hitters. Look, Josh Donaldson, Edwin Encarnacion, and Jose Bautista – had 39 home runs or more each last season. That's three huge power bats. Plus, you brought in Tulowitzki, who really didn't hit very well for you uh, when he came over from Colorado. But you would have to expect if he can stay healthy, obviously. He needs to stay healthy. But this guy is one of the best offensive shortstops in baseball well, still, is, I believe. How old is he, though? What he's getting, he's, he's He is getting, getting up there. there. I mean, he, he's... He, 34, I'm going to say. Yeah, his... Maybe 35. He's a question mark in the infield. Oh, obviously. For sure. Anytime well, you what, have are, what, what are their options? What are their other options at shortstop? Oh, no. Tula, what's he you're talking about? Tula is 31 years old. Well, just... So he's pretty much at the back end of his prime right, right. now. Right. Well, what are their Especially other... But, I mean, they have shortstop. that Goins, the guy that's going to start for him at second base probably while... Uh, Devon Travis is out, but Travis should be back my, by May. So if Tulowitzki can just make it the first month, and then if something happened to him, Goins would probably move over to shortstop or Darwin Barney, a guy like I said they resigned as well. Okay. But he's not; he has no offense really. He's just a oh, defensive player. And that, uh, well, another thing is, I mean, the, it's it's also the division they play in too. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's got to be tough. That's why you build up the offense in that division because you got to score runs, man. You yeah. have to score runs in that division. No you doubt. Go, when you have to compete against A Rod, you better be scoring yeah, runs. Get out of here with that. <laughs> 30 homers last year, just like you I mean, predicted. Big poppy. But the way I see it with this rotation, they have their ace in Marcus Stroman. Outside of that, they have a bunch of number threes, fours, and fives, maybe, I would like to say. But, I mean, you can get it done with that. Let's not forget that they got it done without David Price last year. Before the trade deadline. I barely. Mean, yeah, barely. But that's what I'm saying. Oh, they, they made they, it to the trade they, deadline. They weren't getting it done. It was like... Treading water. It was the offense. That... But, I mean, they were in second place. They they were behind the New York Yankees who were in first place. And, I mean, they were in the playoff race. That's all you got to do. Make it to the playoff race. And then if you need to add something, go add something. You don't really need to have it at the beginning of the season. You just have to have a good team that can stay in it. Are they, See, I'd are they just set be up... good the whole year. Sorry, Easy. Well, I'd well, rather yeah, just be yeah. good all year. But what happens if F you that. sign five aces and four of them stink? Then right. you're screwed. Right. Screw but are, are they, There's are, no salary cap. Are they, are they, <laughs> well, are they set up to pick someone I mean, up here at the deadline this year? I don't know. I mean, they could add some pitching at the deadline, man. We'll have to see. Is Tulowitzki going to be able to stay healthy? Or th is Michael Saunders going to be able to stay healthy? There's questions all over this team, definitely. Yeah. But... I mean, I I see it as a good team, well-rounded team that's going to be able to uh, compete compete again this season. Well, it's like I said. I mean, it's the starting rotation. Like I think Stroman's going to be okay. I think Estrada's going to be okay. Yeah, let's it's not forget they didn't have Estrada's Stroman or David Price for most of the season last yeah. year, man. So they got it done with it, uh, what I believe in even even lesser rotation last season. They do have an outfielder in the minor leagues. He's a top 100 prospect, Anthony Elford. There is a possibility he, he could see some time at the end of the season maybe, but I highly doubt it. Like I said, they're thinking about if they're going to keep Bautista long-term or not. So he could be replacing him eventually. But I, he's only made it to A advance so far. He did have a pretty good season last year between A full and A advance at 298 with a 398 on base. Not much power, just four jacks. But he took 67 walks compared to 109 Ks and 413 at bats. Had 27 stolen bases. This guy does look like he's going to be a pretty good player, but he'll really have to produce to this season to even sniff the major leagues. I'd think. <laughs> yeah. You like that word sniff? That's it. That's. 2016, we're, we're going to do this sniff segment, and if they're going to make it, then they may. If they're going to make it, you'll just hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Yeah, Where's he yeah, starting yeah. the season at this year? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Well, well, he's, we'll have to he's see. down low. Well, yeah, it's either going to be A advanced or double A. They're not going to start him in triple A or anything, but I mean, if they started him in double A and he hit 
well for the first 200 of bats, let's say, and they moved him up to triple A and he hit, I mean, you could bring him up at the end of the season and let him see what he has, especially if you don't make a move at the deadline, if Michael Saunders doesn't work out or something like that, you know what I mean? Hey, you people in Toronto, what do you Toronto, think? Eh? Hey, Toronto, what do you think? Because uh, I think your baseball team's putting together an effort to compete in that division, and I would enjoy it. You know and, what everybody in know, Toronto's thinking? They want donuts, and they want to watch hockey. And they're listening. Yeah, well, no, the the baseballs ba- they've loved the baseball there ever they since have, Joe ever since Joe Carter did work back on what ninety when was that nineteen ninety two ninety two uh or wait no it was ninety uh, ninety three ninety three I'll, I'll I'll root for Toronto ahead of Boston or New York. What about every Baltimore? day of the week? Block Baltimore. No, I enjoy Baltimore as a baseball team. <laughs> not as a football team. Not as a football team, but I enjoy Baltimore as a baseball team because I love black and orange. Yeah, and plus they play Pittsburgh in a World Series. That was a pretty nice World Series right yeah. there. I'd like to see a repeat of that. I just love their uniforms. But uh, one more prospect here. He's an older guy. He got 478 at-bats in AAA last year, so you should see this guy, but he's more of a utility guy. Andy Burns, he's an infielder. He's already 25 years old, but in AAA last year, in those 478 at-bats, he did hit 293 with a 351 on base, 38 walks compared to just 69 strikeouts. So this isn't a guy that's going to come in and take over a position for anyone or anything, but you could see him play multiple positions and be a pretty good backup. He is a pretty good fielder and very versatile. Toronto fans, is there any other prospects that you think you could see this season? I'd like to know. Or is there any of these... Is there anything we missed in this offseason? It's hard to keep track of what happens with every single team. Not every website p- puts out the information for every player that comes and goes for a team. So it's hard to keep track of everything. Yeah, right. so everything Dash is wrong about, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread or hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. We can make fun of him behind his back because he never reads our Twitter or anyway. Believe it. But that's it. What do you guys think? How, how about you, 47? Are they going to... Finish in first place again this season. The Yankees, I think the Yankees look like a pretty good deep team this year as well. So it's going to be tough for Toronto and the Yankees and Baltimore, all these teams. But I still think Toronto is going to compete. And I do think they're going to win this division again. It's going to be awfully close, Dash. Uh, To me, the teams to beat are Toronto and Boston. Not the Yankees. Mm. No, I think the Yankees are going to be okay, but... Their rotation kind of concerns me. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I think they're going to finish second. Right now, I'm liking Boston in this division. Will they make the playoffs? Mm. Wait, did Boston make the playoffs this year? Huh? Okay. So, if Boston missed the playoffs last season, they'll make it this year because that's kind of how they go, Well, I think they actually came in last place in three of the last four seasons I I just read today. Okay, so then they'll come in first place in probably the World Series. Well, well, yeah, but what what did they do in that fourth season they didn't finish last? (laughs) They won the World World (laughs) Series. So, I don't... Damn Red Sox. Yeah, who cares? But uh, I'm going to have to agree with you. Uh, New York and Boston, they'll be there. And you'll see them on ESPN every Sunday night if you want to. <laughs> but uh, I love what Toronto's doing, and I'm happy because the people in Toronto, they do like baseball. But they're not going to win the division this year. It's – it's, and they don't even forget about Tampa. Tampa, T- yeah. Tampa, even when they don't – even when Tampa, you think they're down, they still compete too. Yeah. But I'm not saying they're going to win the division or anything. But I'm, they're going to win enough games. They're going to compete enough to where I think it's either going to be New York or Boston this year. So – 47, is Toronto on the eastern or western part of Canada? Eastern. So they should be able to get some Sunday night games. Actually, we can drive to Toronto from here in probably yeah, like five Toronto or six is where hours. you go if you want to go to Canada. Yeah, we, we'll be here. Well, I've never been to Canada. We eight. can oh, be in Toronto. We'll, we'll be in Toronto in about 15 hours. So, 15 hours. 47, who's the key on this team? Is it J.A. Happ? Does Happ have to pitch like he did la- with the Pirates last season? Can he pitch like that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the is it Ray Searage? Is he really? We're going to find out it's whether not, or not, not it was really Ray Searage. Yeah, that's not Well, I mean, that. contrary to what you said earlier, like he wasn't completely horrible in Seattle. No, I mean, he wasn't. But I, he deserved to be at the back end of the rotation. I think you're going to see lost. like something in between. Yeah, but you're a DH. You're facing DHs and stack lineups. Oh yeah, it's Come definitely on. a lot easier when you go to a place yeah. like Pittsburgh. So who's the key player? What player has to perform for them to win? Is there any key player? Or do they have enough talent where one loss to maybe a Batista or Tulowitzki, it's okay? 
Well, I mean, I think they can make up for it. Don't forget, I mean, they do got a surplus of power sitting on first base right now. Yeah, they do. And, you know, and you still have the fail-safe system up there anyway. You know, you got, plus, you have until the Whiskey's not going to hurt. Even if he doesn't post the same numbers he did in Colorado, he's still going to yeah. be a damn good bat in your lineup. How many balls is Donaldson going to hit out of a stadium this year? None. You're right. Out of a stadium? Not out of their stadium. Out of a stadium. <laughs> yeah, not out of their stadium. Know. For Who sure. knows, man? I was... None. Doodle Jack went out somewhere. I hope he does. I mean, I, that'd be awesome. But really, the dude they can't lose is uh, Estrada, their ace. No, Stroman. You or, mean, yeah. Marcus Stroman. Stroman. That's the guy they, they can't afford to lose. If their pitching stays healthy, they, then they'll be able to compete. If, they, if, if you know, their main one of their main pitchers goes down, they're in trouble. Well, that's one person we haven't really mentioned. We haven't mentioned R.A. Dickey at all this segment. Yeah. No, and and we, we really don't. Yeah. Really. He just has this sort of how does he does it mentality about, or not mentality, like. Yeah, he, well, really, he wasn't a very good pitcher last year. He went from Cy Young to being, really, he went from No, but being, that was his second year in Toronto, though. He went from Cy Young and then Toronto two years ago yeah. and then this year. Yeah, he's been, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been there. That's what I'm saying. Though. Yeah, since, he, 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 since the Cy Young, he's done nothing. That's what I'm saying. But even before the Cy Young, he was mediocre at very best. I yeah. mean, that Cy Young year came out of nowhere. So I never thought of R.A. Dickey. As a great pitcher by any means. He's a knuckleballer. I mean, it, he just Knuckler. had that one year where they couldn't hit K-Nux. his knuckleball. Who has, who has a better... Go I don't know, Tim Wakefield on. seemed to uh, Sorry, easy. be good like, in every other year. Who really? has a better year, Dickey or Hap? Hap. I'd say Hap has the better chance to have a good Hap year. Hap plays yeah. with his Dickey and has a better year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Sum it all up. But really, I think they're missing maybe a number two. I think that's what they're missing out no, of the rotation. So really, it's a team with a lot of question marks, but with a, a lot of potential here, I see. Well, and I believe they're going to come through with that potential. I will say this. like One thing worth noting about the Straw is he, does, he doesn't allow people to get very many hits off him. Yeah, he's. Yeah, a, I mean, he's a decent pitcher. He seems like more of a number three to me, well, though. The thing is with Estrada is he can be wild sometimes. Yeah, or Dickey, I mean, he could always be wild as well if that knuckleball ain't working. And Jay Happ, I mean, he's been wild with Seattle. Definitely. So, shout out to Russell uh, Russell Martin. We still love you. Do you. <laughs> do you, do, son. Do you. We, What's his I middle name, Coltrane it. or something? Coltrane. Shout out to Coltrane. I'm good call on that one. I remember it. And uh, do you. We still love you. And... Uh, Jose Bautista, you still love him? He's a better, I better forgot, Blue Jay than Pirates. I forgot about Jose Bautista. I didn't even care Pirates for him. Pirates almost I ruined didn't him. Care for him when he was here anyway. Yeah, three X Pirates. You, I, I have more heart for Jose Tabata than I do for Jose Bautista. No. <laughs> Cuba, where are you at? Cuba. All right, wrap it. Anything else, Dash? That's it. No, yeah, that's pretty much it. That was a long twenty-something minutes. Get you keep you in depth with this baseball. Thirty minutes. It's getting real. Roll. Baseball's getting real this summer. As I said earlier, fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. We're gonna try to get Dash started on Twitter account so I don't have to keep relaying baseball messages because it's a giant pain in my ass. You can come to our Facebook page at facebook.com/slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube and clicking subscribe. Herb by loves baseball.